Podcast, Patty. How are you doing today? Huh. Yeah, huh. can't pass a good thing. I like the Tyson impression you're just doing. Do that again. Okay, so you see, I'm I'm actually a very uh, um, I'm a very insecure kind of a person, a human being, and it's like I really want to stomp on his children's testicles so he can feel the pain I feel every day. You know, being me. You want to last five seconds in my world? Put your money in this J jacket, you white boy punk. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm the most vicious and most ruthless champion that's ever been. No one can match my style. Lennox, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I love Mike Tyson. I love Mike oh, that's Tyson. That's great. That's fantastic. Seeing as we've just started the podcast talking about a boxer, recently, this week, two days ago, Cuba, for the first time in 60 years, has lifted its ban on professional boxing. Cuba had a professional ban on boxing? Yep. That's insane. Why would they do such a thing? During the presidency of Fidel Castro, pro boxing was banned in Cuba in 1962. But what happened was, is that what they wanted to do was, is Fidel Castro wanted to encourage the amateur boxers. He thought pro boxing was too corrupt, and he wanted to encourage the amateur boxers to fight for their country. Fidel you know? Castro? Yes. So, like, I mean, Cuba was a fucking super country for boxers, amateur boxers. Like, they won, like, tons of gold medals in, in amateur boxing, in, like, the Olympics, the World Championships. And um, a lot of Cuban boxers done more is they defected to other countries, like America and that, so they could pursue professional boxing careers. Ireland had a couple of very well-known and very successful Cuban Irish boxers. We had a big uh, Cuban cruiserweight called Mike Perez. Cuban Cuban Irish boxer. What is it? What does that mean? Well, he was Cuban descent. He, no, no, oh. no. Like Cuban defected to Ireland, so went to Ireland. Got a oh, got like Yeoni Yeoni Park was a North Korea defector. There you go. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, so listeners, a defector is somebody who runs away from their home country. Yeah, runs away from their home country, like defects to a different country. Because of a bad political situ situation or civil unrest, right? Yeah, 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 that's very true. So Mike Perez, he actually fought for the WBC Cruiserweight title in 2017. Yeah, so Cuba has just lifted its ban on professional boxing hmm. after fucking what? Uh, 38, 68 years, 70 years. That's crazy, man. Wow, it's almost yeah. a century. Well, yeah, so, you know, I bet you Cuba's going to start pumping out some fucking top pros. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of good pro pro boxers oh, from cool. Cuba. <coughs> Guillermo Rigondeo. All right, so keep an eye on the on the boxers coming out of Cuba. Yeah, they might fuck. have been waiting all these uh, years man, to blow up. They got them Cuban boxers are slick. Their footwork, they are smooth. Rigondeo. Uh, yeah, I watched Guillermo Rigondeo. I watched Julio Cesar Chavez last night, but he's not from Cuba. No, nope. no, he's not. But he's he from is. Mexico. But that's still that's still they would both be considered Latin America. Would that yeah, be right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, man. Julio Cesar Chavez, he's probably, he is, hands down, the greatest Mexican boxer that's ever lived. Yeah, so I watched the fight where he fought uh, Floyd Mayweather's uncle. Or dad, father? Father or uncle? Father. I think it was, no, I think it was, uh, I think he fought Roger Mayweather. Roger which, Mayweather. Which was Mayweather's uncle, yeah. And so they talked about the style that Mayweather uses, which is where he keeps his shoulder up. What's that called? The shoulder roll. No. The Philly it, shell. Yes. I May think it's Mayweather's, called the Philly shell. Yeah. And they talked about where it came from, who first used it, yeah. and stuff like that. And I was yeah, I was really paying attention. I said, man, uh, um, May Mayweather's uncle Roger was, I think, a two-time world champion. They called him the Black Mamba. Yeah, he yeah, 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 yeah. He was good. That was a great fight. Until fuck, until uh, Chavez beat him. Man, he Chavez. figured out the, uh, what's it called again? The shoulder roll or Sh the Philly so, shell. So the Philly shell is where if you're, uh, if you're boxing normally, not southpaw, your left shoulder hikes up really high and sort of guards your face, so the punches will kind of like slide off. Yeah, roll, and then you can constantly throw your right. Yeah, right. Roll. Yeah, get get turn turn that left shoulder if you're standing in an orthodox style. Turn that left shoulder to, to deflect a right hand or a jab. Usually, the, if the opponent throws a right hand, you time it right. You roll that. You take the right hand with you. It'll come with you, and you counter back with right, your right, right hand. Right, right, right. Mayweather is probably the greatest at ever doing that. Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. He's just a master. Do you think he lubes roll. up his shoulder? <laughs> that way the, the punches just, just glide it's a good right idea. off. That's a great idea. <laughs> but that's a great fight. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez against Roger It was a really good fight. Uh, Roger was a really good fight. We watched some girl MMA and some boxing and the, like that one dude, Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley. He's. I want to know more about we this guy. We will get Sean O'Malley in this yeah. podcast if it if it takes us forever. You hear that, Sean O'Malley? You know, the first you hear thing, that? The first thing I did was judged his hair color and tattoos because I associated <laughs> him with like Tom McDonald, who I do not like. Okay. And then I was like, no, this dude's a badass. So I want to know more. So I for anyone that doesn't know anything about Sean O'Malley, Sean O'Malley is a 
You could still call him an up and coming UFC fighter. Really? Although he's taken over the show, I mean, regarding his personality and, you know, the flair. Like, let's I heard say he's that. a McGregor ish. Yeah. McGregor esque. Yeah, just a more chilled version, I'd say, of McGregor. But a lot of people that come up in the UFC... Now, look, at anybody that's coming up in the UFC now that does anything that's brash or outlandish or outspoken uh, or colourful, they get put under uh -huh. McGregor's shadow. Because uh -huh. he was the first guy to come along and be like, fuck this, I'm going right. to go in there and just, you know, blow right. the roof off this thing. So that's why a lot of guys get compared to him now. But Sean O'Malley seems like a very cool guy. Yeah, He smokes a lot, he's a big gamer, and um, he's in an open relationship. I thought you were going to say he's a big gay. <laughs> <laughs> Which there's nothing wrong with. But. No, no. He's a big gamer. The, uh, He's a big gamer. Let's so yeah, you hear that show no matter. You're out there listening. We're coming for you. We want John here. He's American, right? Yeah, he's American. I get. Well, hey, he's got a name. He's got a name like Sean O'Malley. That he's got to be American. Irish. He's got, that's really, the most, that sounds Irish, not American. That's, that's got, well, he's probably got Irish ancestry. He, like, it's a fact he's got to have. There's no way he can have a name like Sean O'Malley. I and assumed not, he was Irish because of his name. No, he's American, but um, he's definitely got Irish ancestry, no doubt about it. But he's cool. I, I like him. I've been <laughs> following him since he since before he came into the UFC, and um, I think he fought on a show called The Contender. Where oh. Dana White would go around and there's there's two different shows, right? Ultimate Fighting Champion, the Ultimate Fighter, Ultimate Fighter. I'm sorry, and the Contender. Those are two yes. MMA fighting shows. Yeah, yeah. That's where Bisping got big, kind of yeah. right. Bisping, uh, he he won, didn't he win the uh, Ultimate Fighter show? I think he. I only know what I read in his book, but I'm pretty sure that he won, and then eventually he yeah. went back as a coach or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's I've never right, watched yeah. it though. I I fear that it's too reality TV for me. Um, no, I watched I watched the series where McGregor was on it. McGregor was coaching on it against a guy called Uriah Faber, and that was brilliant. Uh, that was uh, really good. Yeah. He just knocked out Chad Mendes and won the uh, interim featherweight title. So his first title in the UFC, he won, knocked out Chad Mendes. And then he was on that show coaching against Mendes' teammate and and coach. Mm. So there was a lot of back and forth. That was funny, though. The chemistry between those two guys, Faber and McGregor, was really fucking interesting and fun to watch. Okay, so Yank, I'm going to jump into today's podcast by rectifying a few things beautiful by writing a few wrongs okay Something you should do <laughs> so i was recently informed by a few people that were listening to the podcast that i got a few things wrong and one of these things is a pretty big thing especially okay. for irish listeners all right so you asked me a question on one of the podcasts i don't remember if it was the paddy's day special or if it was an episode after that you asked me who my favorite irish actor was uh. <laughs> and i said I, I, I said either Richard Harris or Daniel Day-Lewis. Uh -huh. Daniel Day-Lewis is not Irish. We talked about him for a <laughs> long time, dude. I know. Somebody messaged him and they're like, um, you got something pretty wrong on that podcast. And I was like, what was it? And they're like, Daniel Day-Lewis was born in fucking England. Daniel Day-Lewis is English. Oh, my. Wow. That's a pretty big thing to get wrong. So I apologized to Daniel DeLewis. I apologized to the Academy. I didn't mean to slap Chris. To he's, Chris never, Rock. he's never coming on the podcast now. <laughs> Fuck. But you know what? He holds dual citizenship. And guess where that other citizenship? Ireland. Yes. So He's been living in Ireland in a place called Wexford, County Wexford, since 1997. So he's kind of Irish. Yeah. So what would that Wait, be? He's literally like 50% Irish. But there, okay. Then I was half wrong. You're half wrong. So I'm You're sorry. Half for, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for anyone that's listening. Yeah, Daniel Lewis. He was not born in Ireland. He was born in England. So the second thing that I've got to uh, rectify. I uh, this one I just kind of said wrong, but somebody just messaged me in and went, "By the way, Liam and Noel Gallagher are from Manchester in England." And I was like, "Uh, okay. What did I say? I said Liam and Noel Gallagher were from Charlestown in County Mayo. What I meant was is that their her, their mother and their grandmother." And a lot of their family actually comes from Charlestown and County Mayo in Ireland. And Liam and Noel Gallagher would spend a lot of their summers there as kids. So I didn't mean to say that they were from Charlestown in Ireland. I meant their family. A lot of their family roots come from there. They were from uh, Manchester. They were born in Manchester. Man, I would love to get Liam Gallagher on this fucking podcast. I don't even know who he is. Liam Gallagher, the lead singer out of Oasis. Uh, yeah, you have to say that because otherwise I don't know. Liam Gallagher is one of the <clears throat> greatest frontmen ever that's ever lived. I mean... I like Oasis. Oasis, man. What a fucking band. What a band. Early 90s, early Oasis stuff. You can't beat that shit. All right. Yeah, it was good. That time period's excellent. A lot of good music came out then. All right, that's it. I've rectified all the, the uh, hate mail that I got there in the last awesome. few days. Awesome. So are we jumping in? Ah, I have been waiting to drop this bomb on you for three weeks. You're going to drop three a bomb on me? Three weeks, man. Three weeks I've been wanting to tell you this. Going nuts. Itching okay. at my soul. All right. I finally listened to the Blind Boy podcast. I finally listened to the Blind Boy All right, podcast. Okay. And it was riveting is not the right word. 
He's not riveting. Okay. I don't mean that in a bad way, yep. but he's calm and relaxed with the soft piano music in the background. Yep. It's very relaxing, funny, and entertaining. Yeah. yeah I, I think Bri- Blind Boy is a bit of a genius. Yeah. And so the episode, it was the St. Patrick's Day special. That's the one I listened to. Okay. I didn't listen this, to his St. Patrick's Day this special. This was really funny. The first thing he talked about was he went to another country, Spain, I think it was, All right. and he was ordering food. Yep. And the waitress recognized his voice. And bought him a beer. Really? And he found out that a lot of people in Spain study English. And their English teachers are Irish. And they tell their students to listen to the Blind Boy podcast. And they say, if you can understand that, you can understand anything. Holy hell. And so he's like, what I realized is a bunch of fuckers running around speaking Irish English. Like English with an <laughs> Irish accent. And so I really wanted to message him and say, my first school in Taiwan at Hess, yeah. it was me, an American. Another girl was American, another guy that was American, two South African people, and an Irish dude mm. in one school. So imagine this myriad of accents. All these children walking around, and all these children have different accents. Yeah. Like he's, he's kind of got an Irish word. He's kind of like <laughs> South African. He's a little American. Um, yeah, Man. and it's very far out. Like we talked about it before with the girls, right? Yeah. You meet a girl or learned English in I Australia. I never thought about that. Yeah, so uh, so that was really interesting to say for him to say something I could relate to so well. Yeah, and I got more. It was a gangster podcast. It was a very gangster podcast. I told you I recommended you the Blind Boy podcast a while, a while ago, and another a long fu- time ago. A funny thing is that the first time I ever started listening to the Blind Boy podcast was also here in Taiwan five years ago by a guy from Limerick, the same place as where Blind Boy is from, and I'd never met another Limerick person in my life. Even though I'm from Ireland, I never met another person from Limerick, mm. and. Uh, he told me about the Blind Boy podcast and started listening to it. Okay, For so anybody that doesn't know, Blind Boy is an Irish podcaster. He was a member of like a satirical rap group called the uh, Rubber Bandits. He's a creative musician, artist. He's a he's a writer. He's got two books out. Um, I read the first one, but now oh, cool. I, live in, I live in Taiwan. It's hard to get the second book. So Blind Boy, if you're listening, send us a book. Oh, send <laughs> us a book. He do, two books of short stories, which I thought were brilliant. He's very imaginative, very, very creative and imaginative. Yeah. And then... Um, yeah, I have a lot of time for, for Blind Boy in his podcast yeah. and his creativity as a whole. So anybody cool. that's out there listening, hey, check out the Blind Boy podcast. Check after out the you Blind listen to our podcast, and of course it's <laughs> going to be after you listen to our podcast because I just told you about it. Yeah. How I know, fucking I know, I know, I I know some brain. of our American listeners really get a kick out of your accent. So if you want to mm. take it to another level, yeah. Blind Boy's accent is much more thick. But it was yeah. really, hmm, what's the word, soothing? To listen to somebody else with an Irish accent, because you're well, you're really the first Irish person I've ever met, yeah. <laughs> and I listen to you, but I get used to your yeah, accent, yeah. and so when I can listen to somebody else with a thicker accent, I have a greater appreciation for it. It's a beautiful accent. It's beautiful. He has a strong accent. Yeah, from Limerick. Like I wanted to ask you, accent. so that was part of my notes. What does Limerick mean? Limerick is the name of a city. Limerick is the name of a city in Ireland. Yeah, and is it also the name of an accent? No. Um, a Limerick is like. Like a poem, a short poem or something like that. Okay. Like oh, yeah. I lim- learned that in, in high school. Yeah, there you go. A limerick would be like a short kind of a poem. But limerick is a city in Ireland. That's it. I've never been to limerick before. He was he was making fun of somebody named Salt Bay. And Salt uh, Bay. Oh, stop. He was I, making know who, I know who that is. Okay. He was making fun of him because he Sick speaks with me. a limerick accent, but he's not limerick or something. And he's like, yeah. he's like, you got to listen to us. And he played it. And he was like, avocado. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, you know who Salt Bay is? Uh, I had to YouTube. I had to search because I didn't know who he was. He's very, he's very. Uh, I don't know. But I mean, go for him. Whatever he's doing, but our he engineer just, just Josh me. knew who he was. Um, yeah, but I didn't. So let me tell you what I learned in this podcast. Let's go. This was fire. I learned about Saint. No, I need your help here. Okay. Because I don't know what word he's saying. That's how thick his accent <laughs> okay. is. Okay. I learned about something called either Saint Patrick's Hole or Saint Patrick's Hall. St. Patrick's Hole, I would hole. guess. Now, I don't have know you heard of this? No, I haven't. I didn't oh, listen to Blind Boy's man. podcast in quite a while. This shit is fire. St. Patrick's Hole, Hall. I don't know if it's Hole or Hall. Okay, so this podcast was dope, and I'm going to, I guess I'm regurgitating a little bit, but it was very valuable information, and it blows my mind. You don't know what it is. This is no. Irish history. St. Patrick's Hole? I still don't know if it's Hole or Hall. I could not understand <laughs> okay. what he was saying. Right. His accent's thick. Tell me about it. St. Patrick's Hole is a cave. Mm-hmm. On an island. It's a cave in the middle of an island in the middle of a lake. It's in the middle of a lake called Loch Darg. Loch Darg. Loch Darg. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to help me with the I know pronunciation. Okay. And where is it? We'll get there. We'll get to the yes. exact location. I think it was called uh, Don- Donegal. 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 It's in Donegal. Okay. Don- <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> say that again. Danny Gall. <laughs> we say Dunny Gall. Dunny Gall. I have relations up in Dunny Gall. Okay, but you it, don't know about St. Patrick's Hole. That sounds really perverted. St. Patrick's. <laughs> Saint, hey, St. Patrick's Hole in Donegal. <laughs> that just sounds, I don't know what that sounds like. Okay. I, I'm guessing it's Hall because Hole hey, sounds weird. And Yank, do you know where Donegal is in Ireland? Lake, like, Loch Darg. <laughs> <laughs> so Loch Darg is a lake in Donegal, but do you know where in Ireland Donegal is? No. Donegal's in the north of Ireland, but Donegal is not part of Northern Ireland. Ah, so Northern Ireland's controlled by the Brits. Yes. So this is this is in the north of Ireland, Donegal, but it's not part of the six counties. It's not controlled by Britain. So let's hear about St. Patrick's Hole. Cool. So St. Patrick mm-hmm. was taken by pirates, which we've talked about before, mm-hmm. went to Ireland, yep. and then started spreading Christianity, right? Yep. So he started converting people, and then st- some of them started reverting back to their pagan ways. Mm-hmm. So God visited him and said, <laughs> yo, you sent the bitches. <laughs> Basically, like this. God's like, yo, St. Patrick, what's up? I'm going to tell you about a secret cave. If you go here, you can see the tortures of hell. You can get chased by demons. But don't worry, because you'll be guarded by angels. So this is what God said to St. Patrick. Yes. Holy so um, I don't know exactly when this happened, but St. Patrick went there and went down in the cave and experienced purgatory. And saw purgatory and experienced hell, but he was protected by angels. So this cave... What Saint, kind Saint, of drugs were they all taken back then? Good question. St. Patrick was on some psychedelics. Yeah, St. Patrick's <laughs> whole hall. You could go there and experience pur- purgatory without participating. So you could be an observer of purgatory. That just sounds mental. Yeah, so I think this started around the 11th, 12th century... And this became a famous site for Christian pil- pilgrimages. People had some imagination back then, I tell you something. A bunch of people heard about it and started going because they wanted to experience purgatory. Yeah. That is wild. Man, I would love to just take a trip back in time to that exact moment that you're talking about and just observe and watch what the fuck was going on. I would love to just be a fly on the... Just watching, you know, them going to St. Patrick's Hole and then experiencing purgatory, just yeah. getting to watch it and experiencing it. Right, right. I bet they were on some crazy psychedelics. So the, uh, that's very likely. Like, um, God, what was Rogan saying about, like, a lot of the things they used to drink in, back in the day potentially had... Oh, the burning bush. Moses refers to a burning bush, which was actually an acacia bu- bush, yep. which is where DMT comes from. Yes. So a lot of the stuff from the Bible could be sheer hallucinations, uh, psychedelic man. hallucinations. Scott, listen to, listen to We were reading the Bible last night. This is scary shit, man. <laughs> my buddy Josh was reading Revelations. I was like, Dude, my, actually, I did have bad dreams last night. Man. I did have bad dreams. I think it was from the Bible, like man. The, uh, <laughs> this shit creeps me out. I did. I saw demons trying to eat me last like, night. Like that, sh- like, that shit's mental. Like I said, they had been taking some very strong psychedelics, and their imagination were going crazy and wild and back then too when people didn't have as much access to information like science science baby science this is what you know? blind boy said is that back then i think it was around the 15th 16th century oh the 13th to the 15th century yeah there was really wealthy people and like yeah. when you get so wealthy it's hard to find a way to get your kicks Right. Yep. Like if you're Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or like how Prince you... Andrew, the dirty pedophile, <laughs> and I'm not cutting that out. All right. Anyway, I'm sorry, and I'm moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, like the only way they can get off is by like I don't know going to Mars or like how yeah. do you get off when you're really really rich? Killing a giraffe. <laughs> But you have to be like creative once you get so rich because you can have everything you want. So he was saying yeah. these people were so filthy rich, they wanted to experience hell. That was like, that was their high, you know? That was the only thing they could go up. Let's jump back into the history a little bit more. That's very, very true. Okay, so this is a pretty important part. So around the 11th century, there was an Irish knight named Owen. Do you know mm-hmm. him? I think I'm saying his name wrong. Yeah, he own he, or on. Yeah, own. Yeah, he lives just down the road, a couple, a couple of houses down from my mother. Oh. <laughs> is, he he own a, is he own a big place? <laughs> yeah, and a big ass <laughs> horse that doesn't fucking shut up. 11th century, hmm. he was an Irish knight. He went into the cage and he had a vi- an cave. I- he went into, he went into the cage with McGregor. I'll tell you something. He went McGregor. to the cave, St. Patrick Cave, and he had an Irish vision, some sort of vision. Hmm. Uh, well, the, the vision of purgatory. He saw purgatory. And so. I kind of wrote some stuff down because yeah. Blind Boy read directly from some literature. So okay. I'm just going to read you a couple brief lines. Okay, cool. Dragged by his feet, the demons now hurried the mountain. 
All were sitting naked, waiting on terror, carried them weeping to a cold and stinking river. Now that I think about it, this sounds a lot like the Bible when I was reading last night. Really? Dude, the Bible was scary. Holy All yeah. right. But when Owen went down there, he was protected by Christ and the angels. He witnessed hell, witnessed purgatory, and afterwards he was shown heaven in the Garden of Eden. Sounds like an ayahuasca trip, to be honest. That sounds intense. Go through hell and then find heaven in the end. That is an ayahuasca trip. Huh. Right? Yeah. So this knight, so this Irish knight called Owen, he went into St. Patrick's And cave. he had like an amazing experience, and his experience got really famous, got written down, and spread all over Europe. Um, hmm. And that's what started causing the wealthy to go, because they started reading his experience there. And they wanted to go and experience that for themselves. And they wanted to go experience purgatory, too. Is that cave still there today, and can you go down yes, there? Yes, it is. And we're going to get there. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but yes, mm. it's still there today, and... Uh, they closed it down for a brief period of time. I think they closed it in the 16th century. Wow. Yes, but then they opened it back up. Well, I'll bet you green money that ain't nobody going to go into that cave today and have any kind of hallucinations and visions. I want to go. Unless they've got themselves some DMT, some ayahuasca, some magic mushrooms or something like that. Well, it just ain't gonna, okay, so if, if we took 100 people today, go into that cave and, and, uh, and you know, Oh, experience that purgatory and all that kind of magic mumbo jumbo stuff. I bet you anything, it just wouldn't happen. It's but if, a, if you gave them all mushrooms and different shit like that and sent them in, there was like, go in there into that cave. They'd all start coming out, go, man, I've seen some crazy mental shit. All right, check this out, Patty. Yep. Today, if you want to go to Loch Darg, Loch Darg, Loch Darg, <laughs> you got to take your shoes off and walk. This is really funny. So they have to walk on rocks. Yeah. So the monks that live there purposely go around sharpening the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so that when the people walk barefoot, they're constantly ripping their feet open and bleeding, and they're not allowed to eat, and they're not allowed to sleep, and they can only consume something called Lockdarg broth, which is hot water flavored with salt and pepper. Oh, my God. So, of course, they're hallucinating. <laughs> hot, water, hot water flavored with fucking salt blood and pepper. Lo blood loss, no sleep, no food, and just a broth that's water, salt, and pepper. That's Imagine doing that for seven days. I'm gonna be seeing some stuff. Like, who comes up with that? Who conjures that up in their mind? Like, the Christian this is... monks that descended from Saint Patrick. They are fucking mental. He they saved the mental. world, man. You know, there's as humans, we think we're so rational and we're so intelligent for all this, but some of the f shit that we imagine up in our minds, like rituals. You know, like some crazy rituals, like you just said there, in order for you to do this, you need to go through the mighty tunnel of Da, and then you need to eat, drink two nettles from the beard of a fucking giant, you know, whatever the fuck. We just imagine some crazy rituals. Like, culture is that. I like rituals, though. When I started hanging out with the Saudis when yeah. I was in college, when I was 28 years old, they started teaching me the Muslim prayer, and I loved the ritual aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Like you had to like pull out your rug and then like all the different hand pull gestures. Pull out your rug and all the different <laughs> hand gestures. <laughs> F you, I ain't gonna cuss. Uh, but I love the ritual. It's like, yeah. I didn't necessarily know the beliefs. I didn't know the Quran. I didn't mm. know anything, but I loved the practice. The practice itself, man, gave me like, it was the first time in my whole life yep. I had ever found any sort of benefit from any sort of organized religion. Okay. Islam gave that to me. Okay. And I still have that rug today. And the people, the Saudi guys I was yep. running around with, they're the sweetest dudes in the world. I remember one day we were over there, a couple of them were holding hands. I'm like, oh, shit, these dudes are gay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being gay. And then I realized that, no, that's normal in their culture. Yeah. Men are naturally closer. Yeah. Like you were talking about kissing me in the last episode. No, you were saying that you wanted me to kiss you like Captain Gallagher. You were telling me kiss Captain Wall Gallagher kiss kissed Walsh guys. Before they threw him off the, off the <laughs> fucking gallows. So that and this are related because, like, the Saudis never lost that aspect of their culture. The rest of Western okay. cultures uh, had to become domesticated to a certain extent mm -hmm. and learn that kissing guys is not okay. Or I'm sorry, yeah. the Saudis weren't kissing each other. Yeah, yeah. They were holding hands. Yeah. You know, but they never lost that. And I tell you what, man, those Saudis taught me a sense of brotherhood that I had never experienced in my entire life. And I was 28 years old. Huh. And it was the first time I'd ever experienced that level of closeness among men. That's, that's it very was interesting. Awesome. It was beautiful. And I love the ritual of 300. it. 300. <laughs> yeah. That was um, a closeness amongst men. Yeah, but that's that's interesting that you say that because um, I don't know if you're a religious guy. I'm not religious at all. I'm spiritual. And I hate saying that just because it sounds mm. so cliche. Sounds, but I am spiritual, yeah. but I, not really religious. I was brought up as a Catholic. And once I had my own brain, my own mind, my own ability to ask questions, I lost my religion in, in uh, Peru. 
in front of a painting in Peru, and I'll tell that story on the podcast. One day. Maybe I'll tell that story in the podcast next I week. I like that. I yeah, it was the first it. time in my life it. I think I had what you would call maybe an epiphany. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. had a moment there, mm-hmm. and it changed everything. It changed my life. Basically, it changed my way of thinking from that moment. Nobody whispered in my ear. Nobody said that to me, and I just had this moment, and it changed me forever. I've been I've been having epiphanies recently. I think it's <laughs> age. Like I'm 36. I was young back then. I was only yeah. Jesus, I was only 24 maybe. Well, I think due to substance abuse, I matured much slower. But I just learned how <laughs> to stop. We were talking about it before the podcast. Like, I don't care. I don't have the mental space mm-hmm. for your drama, your politics, or your organized religion. Like, I don't have the space for it. So, kind of like fuck off. I didn't cuss a lot today, so I'm sorry for that. But I don't know what else to say. But, like, I just don't have the space for it. You know, I have space for the things I'm passionate about. I do Mm -hmm. not have space for the things I'm not passionate about. Because those things, they take away, they take your energy. Yeah. If we were to sit here and rant about Trump or something bad in the world, we're both going to get maybe mad, you know, maybe bent out of shape. Negative thinking is is, is red in color and it's black and it's dark and it's heavy and it's just, man, it's like. And that's my most recent epiphany. Is that I only Let it care? Go. I only care Let about the go. things I'm passionate about. I don't even know that song because I've never seen the movie before. Anyways, passion is purpose. You, you, cool. so that's a very tough man. That was a great story you told there. Yeah, um, about St. Patrick's Hole, and you said yeah. you got that from the Blind Boy podcast. Yes, and I'm not done yet. So his story got copied, spread all over Europe, and directly influenced Dante, the 14th century poet from Florence, who's credited with the first description of hell. Hmm. He got that. Dante's Inferno. He got that from the Irish knight Own, if I said that right. Uh, yep. Because that, that literature spread. Dante found it. Dante used that literature to do one of the first uh, depictions of hell, a.k.a. purgatory. Dante Inferno's is the first modern vision of hell, or maybe the first vision of hell. Huh. I don't know. Uh, I believe he was Italian. And he took okay. all the credit for the creation of modern hell. But it's actually British-Irish fantasy but he calls it his own the vision of own is where it comes from so i think what i'm kind of tr- I'm, I'm reading some notes here <laughs> yep. but like it was irish it spread all over europe dante read it dante was italian dante uh painted a picture and then took the credit for creating the modern version of hell when actually he took it from irish fantasy from the legend of own oh <sighs> interesting right that is that's unreal so this early hmm. Irish medieval literature we're talking about right now, this influenced Dante, but it also influenced another very famous painter. Guess who it is? Hold on one sec. Don't say Da Vinci. No. Nope. Uh, Van Gogh. No. Um, you guys are going to love this. Picasso. Um, I'll give you three more. <laughs> okay, three more. Uh, Jackson Pollock. Yes. Really? No. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't think it would be Jackson Pollock. Rembrandt. Okay, I'm done. Uh, uh, Caravaggio. Bosch. Hieronymus Bosch, right here on the table. Hieronymus Bosch. I was wondering why you had that book right in front of you. That's a dark book, man. My childhood best friend said, that's all about hell. Every painting in this book. So for listeners, for listeners, listeners, you guys might not know this, but I have this picture, this book on the table called Hieronymus Bosch. It's the complete works. And I've looked through this book. It's dark. It's creepy. You know what it reminds me of? revelations out of the bible that my buddy was reading to me last night i I really think that's why i had bad dreams last night man i'm not i'm never reading the bible again that shit is scary that shit's scary man yeah tell me about it fucking they were they teachers us in school when i was a kid growing up guy nailed to a cross i'd would rather i would rather drink ayahuasca than read the bible drink his blood and eat his fucking flesh what now now now, hold on (laughs) some people get things out of the bible and i respect that Mm. if you get valuable information from the bible good for you yeah for me the first time I found valuable information was in the Tao Te Ching when I was about 16 years old. I was in a world religion class. And the Tao Te Ching is the Bible for Taoism. And it was the first piece of spiritual literature I had ever read that made sense. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing about that is nothing in it makes sense. <laughs> you have to read a verse about 100 times. I'm going to read you a verse right now. Of the Tao. The Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching. In Chinese, it's pronounced... Dao de jing. 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 My, my, my Chinese pronunciation sucks. Yeah, I, I can remember a lot of the grammar and a lot of the uh, the vocabulary, but uh, it's the pronunciation. Okay, I'm going to try to just pick a random verse. All right, so you're going to read something from the Dao. The Dao Te Ching. All right, let's hear it. And uh, after I got fascinated with the Dao, the Dao is like the universal, divine universal force that is flowing through the veins of our planet. I don't know how better to describe it than that. 
So first, I'm going to read you a verse that's very mm -hmm. abstract and hard to understand, and it's okay. what steers most people away from the Tao Te Ching. All right. The way that can be spoken of is not the constant way. The name that can be named is not the constant name. The nameless was the beginning of heaven and earth. The named was the mother of the myriad creatures. Hence, always rid yourself of desires in order to observe its secrets. But always allow yourself to have desires in order to observe its manifestations. These two are the same but diverge in name as they issue forth. Being the same, they are called mysteries, mystery upon mystery, the gateway of the manifold secrets. It's very hard to understand, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. Each ver that's one verse. So each verse, I would have to read it 10 to 15 times. To understand it. Before I finally get the picture. Huh. But then once you start getting deeper into it, you start to like understand these deep philosophical messages. Yeah. And it was just, it was the first thing that I aligned with. And then, and then in that same class, I discovered Buddhism and I was like, whoa, a psychological approach to spirituality. Hmm. This is tangible. This makes sense. Mm -hmm. You can use it in everyday life. This makes sense. Yep. I'm in and I've been <laughs> in ever since. <laughs> but there was something cool about Islam that Islam provided was, which was this ritual Okay. You know, all the ways you had to move your fingers, you yeah. had to turn left, turn right, say something. Put your left foot in, times. put your right foot out, do uh, the, the hokey pokey, pokey and you turn oh, about. I can't, I can't bash on Islam. <laughs> I love Islam too much. Um, I can't but, bash on the hokey pokey. I love it too much too. But it was cool. It was cool. I enjoyed Islam. I enjoyed, mm -hmm. I enjoyed Islam. I enjoyed Buddhism. I enjoyed Taoism. And I still enjoy the three today. But like a cafeteria, I heard I was in Cambodia one time at an AIDS orphanage and they said something about they were cafeteria Catholics. Meaning they only take what they want and they leave the rest. <laughs> that's kind of that's my approach to religions in general. Okay. I take what I like, what I agree with, yeah. and I leave the rest that's, for the birds. That's, uh, if you're going to be religious, that's a smart way about. about you being don't want to overcommit. That's a right? smart way about doing it. Yeah. yeah. It's like everything in this book is true, and I believe everything that's in this book. You know, I mean, it's like well, they're okay, them morals and them stories in the book make sense, and it might be a good thing to apply to your life. But in this other religion, oh, these things actually make sense. And they were a good thing to apply to your life. But I don't think you need religion to be a good person at all. And I'm not going to get into a religious debate today or we talk shouldn't. about that. We should Because maybe next week I'll do my losing religion story and we can talk about that next week. Yeah. I never had it to lose in the first place. Well, it was forced upon me. Yeah. Just like it's forced upon most people. You know, my... Really you're, you're not you're not born religious. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. ba no baby comes out fucking doing the sign of the cross <laughs> and going, you know, our father who art in heaven, blah, 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 blah. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, my favorite form of spirituality, not organized religion is Toltec Wisdom by Don Miguel Ruiz. I remember our first or second podcast. I couldn't say his name right. Now I have both of his books in my hand. We'll put a picture on IG. Everybody, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend you read these books. They changed my life. What is Toltec fucking... What did you just say? Toltec Wisdom. Toltec Wisdom. What's Toltec Wisdom? Toltec Wisdom is, I believe, from the Aztecs in Mexico. I believe in I the believe Lord. I <laughs> so I think it's a ancient indigenous spirituality that originated in Mexico. Mm. Jeez, why don't I just read the back? <laughs> Based on the ancient Toltec wisdom. He's the guy who wrote the book, The Four Agreements. Yes, he wrote The Four Agreements and The Mastery of Love. And then he has like, I think like 10 other books, dude. He's got The Mastery of Self. He's got a bunch of books. But dude, they really, the, the relationship one upgraded my relationship like tenfold mm. overnight. The Four Agreements helped me with a lot of things. One that's sticking out right now is don't take anything personally. Don't take anything personally. That's very difficult for people to do. That's very difficult for me to do. It's very yeah. difficult for anybody yeah. to do. Don't take it yeah. personal. Like Chris Rock. Don't take that personally, dog. Will Smith is probably having a bad day. Maybe he's even hung over. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just has Jaded Pinkett Smith as his fucking wife. But you know what I mean? Like Maybe if, that's if, if we walk into a 7-Eleven yeah. and the dude at 7-Eleven is rude, we can yeah. very easily get mad and walk out and be like, that asshole was just rude to me i just consciously cussed but the opposing thought could be oh he must be having a bad day maybe he didn't sleep much last yeah. night and that's how we learn to not take it personal by putting ourselves in our shoes or like oh he must be having a bad day or blah blah, blah. it's, it's really all about easy. how it's all about how you react to things isn't we're it? very like egocentric right so we yep. always think everything's about us everything yep. is not always about us if somebody's really rude to us it's not anything we did yeah it's something they're going through um, and Don Miguel Ruiz calls that the parasite. You know, we all have the parasite. And essentially, when mm -hmm. he says the parasite, I think he's referring to the ego. Okay. You know, and just how we think the world revolves around us, and we take everything personally, we make assumptions, and we yep. speak without thinking first. 
you know? Yeah. And uh, it's been a very, very inspiring book. But uh, I challenge our listeners to try to be mindful of whether or not you take things personally in your daily life. It can it can really upgrade. That would be like our biohack for the day. Because remember, biohack is not only in the body, but yep. also in the mind. Yeah, exactly. And what you said there about reacting to if you go to a store and the clerk is being rude to you or whatever like that, just brush it off. Let it go over your head because that you don't want that moment to drag out. Like you're going to feel negative thoughts. You're going to be getting angry. You're going you, to be start, you start, you start, you walk out ruminating about negativity. Yeah. And that's where that, that's where that secret app would come into play. Because mm-hmm. when I open that, it's always like, what are you focusing on right now? And a couple of times <laughs> I walked out of work and I was focusing on how bad my kids that were that day and how yeah. angry I was about how bad they were. And I said, focus on something you want. And then <sighs> boom, you know, 360 degrees, 180 degrees. I don't know. A big change, you know? And I immediately started thinking about, I want a house in the country with a Harley and a horse. And I immediately <laughs> felt better. Immediately. Like yeah. the whole weight had been lifted off my shoulders and I immediately just felt. <sighs> That's it. Because a lot, a lot of the times when you feel that negativity, you're just bringing it on. You're just, you're manifesting it yourself. You're creating that yourself. In That's that moment. Cancer. Yeah. In that, exactly. It is. And grow people too that have resentment and they hold on to grudges and stuff like that. That negativity that festers in their minds and brains, if they can just learn to let go of that and forget about it. We talked about that on the last podcast about how yeah. Gabor Mate was talking about how repressed anger over several years mm-hmm. can cause inflammation, which can lead to inflammation-based diseases. To physical health and decline. That's, and that's not just anger. That's repressed anxiety, repressed depression. Can you repress depression? I don't know. Repressed depression. But repressed emotions yeah. in general. It makes sense because there's all this energy inside you that can't get out. Yep. Of course, it's going to cause inflammation. It seems like common sense, actually, yeah. but it's not common sense. You no, know, so you got to let those. If you're sad, it's be good sad. Sense. It's, it's okay to be sad. It's yeah. okay to be angry. It's yeah. okay to be anxious. Yeah. Just if you're going to punch somebody, make sure it's a baby, <laughs> or make sure it's not. <laughs> a, <laughs> it's not on the Oscars in front of fucking <laughs> yeah. millions of people. You know? Make sure it's not. The whole world's not watching <laughs> if we're going to hit somebody. <laughs> Unless you're getting paid like you're in the octagon or the boxing ring. Yeah, we just saw a pretty crazy fight outside. I kind of wish this old lady would have got hit. Yeah. We, screaming at the yeah. neighbor, screaming at the top of her yeah, lungs. It was like a domestic about telling a neighbor not to park his scooter in front of her house. Yeah. I believe that's what it was about, but she I'm was, not sure. She, it went on screaming. for like 15 or 20 minutes. I was just standing at the window just getting some fresh air watching this whole thing unfold. And it was like all the old people from the area just like fucking came out of the woodwork like, you yeah. know, <laughs> like so, wood lice. And they just submer- submerged on the scene, emerged on the scene where there was some kind of drama. It's like, there's something going on outside. A big part of Asian culture is saving face. Um, and they got a that. huge yeah. part of Asian culture saving pace. Well, it's also just it's also just confrontation. Yeah, like if there's a problem at work, mm-hmm. they'd almost rather not deal with the problem than yeah. have to deal with confrontation. Yeah, because of the risk of losing face. Yes. Yeah, Which, that's a real thing. I th- I'm pretty sure that came from Confucius and like his different okay. ideas of like filial piety. Yeah. Filial piety is one you were just talking about. You must respect your elders because they're your elders. Which I don't agree with at all. Which you don't agree with. No, right, right. No, I don't. I think you should just, if people show respect, you give respect. If you give respect, it's great think... if it's great if they show respect. But it's like, because somebody's older than you, I don't understand why you have to respect them. Which here in Taiwan, that's a huge thing. It's like, oh, you know, anybody that's older, older than you, you have to call them older sister. Or older brother, oh, even they're JJ, not, but they're Koka. not. Yeah, they're not related to you or anybody that's like older than you. Have to call them auntie or uncle, and oh. it's like, well, yeah, that's not my auntie, that's not my uncle, that's not my older brother, that's not my older sister, and also, I don't have to think anything different of them because they're older than me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Let, let me chime in on that. I want to, I want to compliment that real quick. Uh, so in Chinese, they actually have a different word for older sister and little sister and a yep. different word for bigger brother and little yep. brother and their cousins they don't call their cousins they call their cousins big brother or big sister yes. it's very interesting yep. so sometimes i'll be teaching and one of the little kids will be talking about their sister or something i'm like i know you don't have a sister <laughs> that's your cousin yeah uh, and i have to explain it to them and they don't really understand because they, they doesn't they, exist yeah. so big sister is jie jie yep and little sister is mei mei yep and big brother is gug and little brother is dd yeah I think I got those tones right, but I'm not sure. You got the words right anyways. <laughs> I got the like words I said, right. I, I remember those. a lot of vocabulary, JJ. but the tones I suck at. You know what's really funny? I used to live with a guy named JJ, and my girlfriend couldn't say his name. <laughs> and he was this big, big, like obese alcoholic. Yeah. And she would call him JJ because she couldn't say JJ. So she's always calling him big sister. Her English was really bad. <laughs> She'd be like, hey, JJ, big sister. But he's this old, fat, bald, <laughs> alcoholic man. What the fuck? <laughs> my God. Yeah. 
But um, my dog, actually. Sorry, I don't say my god, my dog. Yeah, but they're focused on saving face. But when they blow up, they blow up. And right before oh, the podcast, yeah. man, she was. We're on the fifth floor of an apartment yeah. building. Everybody in the whole block could hear this woman yeah. screaming. She was going oh off on this on this guy outside. Like she and she, she was very, being really animated. She was like using her hand, pointing her fingers right in his face. He was just standing there. There was a couple of older guys standing there, and they were just they weren't saying shit. They were just kind of like looking around. And she was like running into the house, and then like. 20 seconds later, she'd run out of the house. She'd start going crazy at him again. And I've seen that a lot Her here in Taiwan. Her finger was right up in his face, man. I would have I would have had to have walked away. Yeah, I would I would have had to. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> prodigy all day. Smack my bitch up. <laughs> Amazing tune. The Prodigy were unreal. I've seen quite a lot of that here in Taiwan where people just go from zero to 100 with their aggression because I guess they suppress it so much like you said before. We're, we're, the Western cultures are more communicative and assertive. I think mm. assertive is a very important word and a good friend of mine taught me that word. You yep. need to be assertive, which is not aggressive, yep. but straightforward, concise, and honest. Yeah. Uh, say that, what say what you're thinking. Yeah, assertive. Assert- yeah. And that's always been kind of a, a difficult task for me to be assertive without being aggressive. Yeah. Or to be assertive without having my opinions in control. Yep. You know what I mean? That's, that's, a, that's challenging. It's, it's a good thing to be to be mindful of and aware of. Yeah. Which I guess a lot of people wouldn't be, myself included. Yeah. You know? Mindfulness um, is everything. So, today, if uh, if anybody's interested, you can go to Lock... Lock Darg, Lock Derg. How do Lock, you say it? Lock Derg. Lock Derg, which is where in the north of Ireland. Yeah, in Donegal. Donegal. I love that word. Donegal. <laughs> really? I don't know. It sounds. It's so fun to say Donegal. Up in Donegal. Do you want me to give Donegal. you? Donegal. Do you want me to give you an impression of a, Donegal, do. of a Donegal? I didn't like accent. it the first time you did it. Okay. I think I was just. I don't so know. So I'll give you an impression of a Donegal accent. I'll give you my Donegal accent, right? Hey, how's it going there? Hey, I was down the train right, there. Try. How's it going there? How's you doing? <laughs> you doing all right? Are you? Come here, little sunny boy. <laughs> Pretty good. That, that was hilarious. That was the Yanks' attempt at a Donegal <laughs> accent. So in Donegal, they talk like, it's like, hey, I was down the town there last night, and I seen this wee fella down there outside the chipper, and I said to him, listen, fella, you're not coming in here. Why? Because you're too bloody small. You're a wee fella. You're too bloody small, are you, fella? Get the <laughs> fuck out. Oh, you got to get the fuck right. That, Get the fuck out. That sounds a little bit more like a Dublin accent, but you, oh, really? you've got a bit of an English twang, like a London thing going on when you try your Irish accent. But I think it's I was telling my mom last night, I didn't I realize hilarious. how much I sound like a hillbilly until we started this podcast. <laughs> and especially when we did the one skit where I'm like, who the hell is it? It's four o'clock in the damn morning. <laughs> Learned it from my Paul, that, my that's, stepdad. That's hilarious, actually. But yeah, so that's that's my that might have been sounded like a Belfast or a Derry accent. I don't know, but that's my... Attempt at doing a Donegal accent. So, listeners, if you are interested in experiencing purgatory, go to Donegal. You will walk on sharpened rocks <laughs> that monks have previously prepared for you. You will not eat. You will not sleep. And you can only consume one thing called lock Darg Broth, which is hot water flavored with salt <laughs> and pepper. Go to Lock Dog now and experience the best Christian pilgrimage you will ever experience. Actually, I want to. Actually, I want to go, but I want to skip hey, the whole cut in my feet part. Yank, <laughs> yank, we will have to take a trip to Ireland. You know what? So we want to come to Ireland. Bring Patty help, and help, to Ireland. Bring yeah, there we go. Bring Pat. Oh, what's that one website called? Uh, GoFundMe. GoFundMe. Bring Patty and the Yank to Ireland. Leave it at that. <laughs> I feel good. I like that. I like that. Cool. Yeah. Bring us to Ireland. We want to do a live podcast. And I've never been to Ireland. I want to see it. Man, I'd love to get you over in Ireland, Yank. Donny Gall. I'm coming, baby. <laughs> we'll go up to Donny Gall. We're going to Patrick's Hole. <laughs> after <laughs> after we've had after we've had a few pints of good, smooth Guinness. Irish Guinness. Oh man, sounds fun. And a handful of mushrooms. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks everybody for listening to this podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. We went on just a bit of a ramble, just a free fall today. And uh, please follow the Instagram. Like the podcast, give the podcast a rating and a review, share it. All your support is, is greatly appreciated. We're going to leave you with a tune now again from uh, Ninja Ned. You can switch the podcast off now or you can continue and listen to the song. Uh, and shout, out, shout, shout out to all the friends and family that's been sending me comments, suggestions, and critiques. I appreciate and enjoy them very much. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Peace, Peace out, everybody. Oh.